Relying on CDC guidance in the absence of specific numbers and scientific data, you heard Miami-Dade's mayor make the case for reclosing businesses like indoor restaurants where people share unmasked airspace. The backlash to that order was immediate from a struggling hospitality industry that has been reopened, had been reopened just weeks and trying to recover. Annie Meinhold runs Phuc Ya, a Vietnamese Cajun restaurant in Miami that before Thursday had been open, complying with all the guidance. She is part of the industry's collective question, asking, why us? And right there, she is with us via Skype. Annie, good morning. Morning. I guess good afternoon almost, but uh, you know. <laughs> it's almost um, 12 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to um, ask you, you know, we've done stories this week as the restaurant inside was being reclosed and um, you were talking about not necessarily disagreeing with reclosures. Your question was that you felt like restaurants had been singled out. And now that you've heard the mayor this morning really make a case for why he wanted to make this move, have, have you changed your mind? I mean, I still haven't changed my mind. I think that, I don't think the issue is reclosure, is closure. I think it's the fact that the restaurant industry is being singled out. Um, you know, I went on uh, an account this morning on Instagram and all I saw were um, bars being full, nightclubs being full, private house gatherings with like mariachis and stuff. And I just cannot understand um, how it is that with all of these people congregating in large parties, large events, it's the restaurants that seat two to four people that are complying with the new mandate, the new normal mandate issued by our own mayor. Why is he targeting us and not those individuals? Well, those it, are it sounded like, uh, excuse me for interrupting, but it sounded like those other individuals were absolutely also being targeted. And I guess the, the question is, how do you enforce something like that? Correct. Correct. And I think what, what, what uh, Mayor Holness was just saying, I mean, he's right on, you know, greater enforcement, limiting parking, you know, actually going out and um, you have the, th the 311. But in Miami-Dade, it's different. You know, city of Miami, city of Miami Beach, we have so many cities and no one can get on the same page. And, you know, for Mayor Jimenez to single-handedly in his most recent statement point out that one in three or four diners carry uh, carry Corona. I mean, it's not diners, people. It's people across the board. It's the entire population of Miami-Dade County. Well, I think just, I mean, just to, I think his point was there's 25% positivity rate. So theoretically, every one in four people in Miami-Dade, or uh, yeah, every one in four people in Miami-Dade is possibly positive. I think, I think that was his point. But let me ask you, in, in a compromising um, situation theoretically like the gyms compromised and are ordering masks be worn all the time although we see how that was already violated the first day in some places well what might for instance your restaurant do as a compromise to to allow people to dine with their masks on in a safe way I mean what would that even be like I mean, the only way to really do that is to make sure that when you're seated at the table and you're having conversation with your peers, you keep your mask on. You remove your mask only to drink a beverage, put it back down, put your mask on. You know, eat when your meal arrives, finish eating and put your mask on. That really is the only way to realistically do it. Um, and I would love to say that restaurant employees can try to enforce that as much as possible, but to have to tell different people at different times how and when to keep their masks on, you know, we also need those individuals to play their part as well. You yeah. know, it's not it's not us. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, it's not the owners. I mean, the hospitality restaurant in industry in South Florida is just huge and it's critical for so many. And I know, you know, your, you and your employees have now thought about unemployment again and, and what to do. Yeah. I mean, what do you see as the changing face of the restaurant industry, not only short term, but but long term? You know, it's that's a really, really hard question, because in the short term, um, you're going to see a lot of closures. A lot of places are not going to be here in three months. Um, in the long term, the people, the businesses that survive, I mean, it will be sort of survival of the fittest will be there, but it's not going to be. It's not going to be the same, you know. Um, restaurants are supposed to bring people together, family, uh, family occasions, celebrations. We're supposed to be there when you have something 
uh, wonderful to celebrate, or if you've had a really bad day, we're there, we're there for you. So um, it's really, this, this whole situation is very challenging. It's, it's, we, we're questioning what we're doing on a daily basis. Yeah. Um, I, I just want to kind of put an exclamation point on that great big sigh because that you and your colleagues and the industry and really we all are in for some really tough times in, in very different ways. I know there are a lot of people in the industry looking to do fundraising and try to prop up uh, some of the people who are having the hardest time. Annie Meinhold, Fook, yeah. Um, Great restaurant, and I just want to say to everybody that that is not an FCC violation, that you taught me that it means blessings, prosperity, and good fortune. Good fortune, yes it does. Thanks so much for being with us.